I wish the title to this episode was clickbait. It's not. We face a market that is seeing mobile home parks be redeveloped and shut down at an alarming rate. In the spirit of mobile home parks in real life, I'm going to say some things today that will not be taken well, probably by both sides of the argument. I am willing to do that for you, the listener, because at the end of the day, I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for anything. I started mobile home parks in real life to get in real life, raw truth to you so you could help make this space better. I don't know how else to say this. I need your help. I need everybody's help. Our residents need your help. And I'm going to show you why with math. There's a big fat reason why these mobile home parks are getting redeveloped. It's a thing called highest and best use. I'm going to show you a, for example, here in one of the markets that I'm active in. There's a 20 lot mobile home park that made the news because it's getting redeveloped. It's getting shut down, booted out. See you later. The sellers sold for a million dollars to a developer. And it makes sense why. If you have 20 lots at $200 lot rent, say a 35% expense ratio. Interest rates right now, as of this recording in 2022, are plus or minus five. So I think five and a quarter is probably fair. 20 year AM, probably fair. And if we were to buy it and maintain it as a mobile home park, you probably are going to spend at least 10,000 to close and hold 50,000 in reserves for X, Y, or Z. Seven cap is probably high. I've seen that mobile home parks are trading on average in the sixes, but since it's smaller, we're going to go with 7%, especially as interest rates are rising. But as you can see over to the right, basically with a lot of assumptions, your NOI is only about 30,000 and minus debt, you're actually losing money, at which point in time you're cap rate is about a three, which is not much better than normal inflation. And as we know right now, uh, inflation is not normal. So if you are to stabilize it at a seven cap, the valuation is not even a half a million dollars. So this mom and pop mobile home park owner is ecstatic. And why wouldn't they be? From their eyes, this property is maybe worth 500000 if they were reasonable and basing their valuation as anybody else in commercial real estate would on a cash flow basis, not a covered land play basis. But this is now a covered land play because what you see here is basically the developer is offering a 50000 per occupied site valuation at a million bucks, which is over $500,000 more than what this thing is worth as a cash flowing asset. And what your outcome is quite simply is that the affordable housing is lost because what's going to happen is it's going to get redeveloped into luxury apartments or single family homes or townhomes or this, that, or the other thing. Likely not more affordable housing. We are seeing this again and again and again all across the country. So what's the right answer? How do we preserve affordable housing? Well, this is the part where unfortunately I likely get some heat from the opposite side of the argument. Whereas one side says, hey, the highest and best use is not a mobile home park. The other side says, hey, we need affordable housing. Well, the irony is this number, this stabilization number, needs to be higher than what the developers are offering. And the only way you do that is by ironically raising rents. In other words, you have to make it less affordable to keep it affordable. 
So now this particular mobile home park is situated in a market where the fair market lot rent is $500. In other words, boy, are they low on their rents. And I know why. And the reason why is because these mobile home park owners, they've kept the property for decades. And way back in the day, it was very easy to move a mobile home in and out of a mobile home park. And there was more price sensitivity. You could move your trailer, your mobile home across town for a whole lot less. And if the other guy is 50 bucks less than you, it may actually make sense. That is not how it goes anymore. Now it's thousands and thousands to move a home and it just doesn't happen very frequently. And because of that, mama pops didn't raise their rents over the years out of fear, out of this, that, and the other thing, complacency, whatever it was. And what ends up happening is as inflation creeps up and the buying power of the dollar goes down, also ironically, <laughs> by not raising your rent, you're actually giving them a discount on their rent every year. It's not that you're not raising their rent. It's that you're giving them a discount by not at least raising rent by whatever inflation is, 2 3%, whatever that is. So in other words, rents aren't staying at 200. Rents are lowering every single year, which is very hard to fathom if you don't really understand the concept of inflation, which is fine. A lot of folks don't go to business school or aren't up and up with a lot of how the economy works, even though to a lot of you listening in, that's a very basic concept. It's not a very basic concept to a lot of folks who've never heard of inflation before or don't quite understand what it is. And it's a very difficult conversation to have with someone. And I've done it myself time and time again, face to face with someone look, what we're doing here is we are getting you to a fair rate. $500 in this market is fair. There are plenty, plenty of other mobile home parks just down the road at and above 500. The problem is this mom and pop owner did not raise their rents at all for years or very, very seldom did they raise it. And while this looks great, by the way, you buy it for a million dollars, you invest some capital into it. The NOI shoots up to almost 80,000. And at a seven cap, you're 1.1 million. In other words, the highest and best value is to remain a mobile home park at that point in time. Notice I'm saying here, by the way, I'm not saying that you have to go above market. I'm not saying that you have to be above the big fancy mobile home park in the county. I'm just saying, you just have to make it fair. You just have to make it what everyone else is paying for a similar product in that same municipality or county. That's it. Not saying go, go above that. So in other words, it's not necessarily a bad thing to charge a fair price for something. In fact, as you can see right here, now all of a sudden, the mom and pop owner can sell for a fair price to someone like myself or you listening in who is going to fight to preserve and enhance the affordable housing, make it even better than it was before, and maintain, preserve the affordable housing rather than knocking it down and putting in condominiums. All because we charged a fair lot rent. That's it. Again, not saying go above market, just saying get to market. And all of a sudden, what you'll see is mobile home parks ought to stay mobile home parks. But the problem is, try to explain to someone who's been paying $200 that in order to not lose their home, that they've paid off and that they can't move a lot of times because it's too old to move. And if it's too old to move, it's also too old to sell for a good price. So in other words, they're trapped. Try to explain that to someone that even double their rent at 400, even double their rent doesn't get you to the million dollar cutoff for the property valuation 
So you're still losing the affordable housing. It is a tough, tough conversation. And I wish I had the answer, ladies and gentlemen listening in. I wish I had the answer for how to explain to someone who's been on a property for 20 years and cannot move their home, why they are going to lose their home if they aren't paying a fair rate. Because to them, it is absolutely unfair that you're raising rents really at all, because for the last 20 years, they haven't raised rents, if at all. In fact, they get a discount every year because of inflation. I realize a lot of folks listening in on both sides of, of the aisle are not overly happy with me making this content right now and putting it out there. So I will say to anybody listening in that is not offended by the mathematics that I just did, by the hopefully overly basic real estate concepts that I just explained there in highest and best value, I really hope you come to defend me as well as, and more importantly, our residents and our space. Because this is going to keep happening, everyone. Again, I am not, I have to say this and sound like a broken record. I am not advocating going above a fair market value for these lot rents. I am merely stating, let's just keep it fair for crying out loud. Just keep it fair. Just keep it fair. Because if you keep it fair, as the math just shows right there, a lot of times, more often than not, you will not lose the affordable housing. So again, just a couple things to hit before we part ways for this emotional episode for me personally, because where this is born from is a very personal example of a mobile home park that I am not overly happy that it is going to be lost, even though it's very, very small and in the grand scheme of things insignificant. It affects everyone when you lose something like this. So Let's hit some really important points. First and foremost, inflation. It's always going up. Traditionally, it's 2 to 3%. What that means is the buying power of a dollar today is less than an equal dollar bill from last year, several years ago, yada, yada, yada. So if your lot rent has been 200 for 10 years, it's really not 200 anymore. It's less than that relative to 10 years ago or whenever that time was when you moved in. Rents have to go up, if nothing else, just to meet inflation. And especially during a high inflationary period where gas is expensive, materials are expensive, labor is expensive, utilities are getting more expensive, everything is getting more expensive. These mobile home parks are getting more expensive to run. And therefore, the lot rent has to go up. And you are seeing that everywhere not just mobile home parks, apartments, by the way, are skyrocketing relative to where they used to be. The media doesn't seem to want to talk about that as much. Why? Because media highlights extremes. And they have to, because their incentive is to get eyeballs. They need advertisements and subscriptions. I don't blame them. I get it. Everybody is self-interested, even if they're claiming to be a champion of X, Y, or Z person, and they're an angel, and how dare these mean developers or these, these people or that or whomever is the bad guy. Look, I just mentioned earlier, I am not selling anything. I am not raising any funds. I don't care. I am here to deliver in real life. And the in real life is that when you consume some of this media, you're getting the extremes and not the moderate middle. And you know what the moderate middle is in this situation in these mobile home parks? The moderate middle are the good people like you listening in who are going to, if you don't already own a mobile home park and you do things like charge a fair rate or replace septic tanks when they need to be replaced instead of just pumping them and wishing for the best, you're going to invest you are and are going to continue to invest capital in these properties. Make them nice. Get the drugs and the crime out. Keep it clean and safe and affordable for the kids, right? You're already doing that and you're going to continue to do that more. You are underrepresented in the media, listeners. You are. You are underrepresented in the media. We need to be louder about doing things the right way and we need to speak find out together how we can charge a fair rate to fight to preserve 
these mobile home parks because highest and best use may dictate that they not be affordable housing anymore. And if we're going to attempt to solve or at least allay the affordable housing crisis in this country right now, it has to come from a market correction on rents. In other words, the rents were way too low on purpose for various reasons. And unfortunately, it's at the point where it is harmfully low. We need a market correction. We need to be at the front lines of this market correction. And again, we need to charge a fair, not predatory rate. Again, I've said it again. I'm going to say it again. A lot of these homes are paid for and they are not able to be moved. And these residents cannot go anywhere. And if they sold, they'd sell for pennies on the dollar. This is a, a situation that is absolutely ripe for predatory behavior. We have to fight to keep predatory people out of this space to fight for our residents. That being said, it is absolutely, absolutely not predatory to charge a fair price. It is not your fault, mobile home park owner listening in, that the last person decided to give their residents a discount every single year by not raising their rents. Again, I will fall on the sword here. I know that's going to make a lot of people upset saying that, but again, it's the truth. And because of that, the irony becomes if you don't raise the rent, you can't keep it affordable housing. It's just going to become something else. So with all of those factors all together, the right answer is we need to combat slumlordism. We need to find ways to make the rent increases more humane, more justifiable by investing capital and showing people that you care. A couple quick examples of that. I go to my properties myself. I don't tell people I'm an insurance agent or with corporate. I look people square in the face and I tell them that I am the owner and I speak Spanish. So if you can't speak English, it's not a problem. I will speak to you face to face. Do people get ugly with me? Absolutely. People are going to get ugly with me and you, no matter what. However, the overwhelming majority of people are so kind, so kind. And the majority of people understand the situation. And the majority of people, when they finally come to understand, this is good news, by the way, the highest and best use argument and the need to keep it fair, right? Not predatory, keep it fair. The overwhelming majority of my residents and folks I have dealt with understand. And then their next question is, can you please not sell this because I'm afraid a developer is going to come in and, and make me move. So in other words, the majority of folks living in our communities, if you take the time to explain it to them, not hide behind an employee or write a letter and don't go talk to them. If you go talk to them yourself, you'll find that people are very rational and they want to work with you to maintain these communities. So I, again, happy to fall on the sword here. I, this is what I signed up for by creating my podcast, Mobile Home Parks in Real Life. I signed up to have people on both sides of the aisle be very upset with me. So you listening in in the middle, please join me in this crusade, if you will, to help fight to preserve affordable housing. And it is not going to be an easy battle. There are going to be a lot of folks who do not understand what I just laid out with math and a lot of people who don't care, even if they do understand, because they want their own selfish, greedy thing. And again, on both sides of the aisles, developers will be very upset at what I'm saying. And folks who have been paying $200 a month that just want to continue to pay $200 a month will also be upset. So the big, greedy, evil developer guy is going to be mad at me, just like the resident who is playing a victim that is, is going to be upset with me. It's, it's not the extremes we need to be worried about. It's the moderate middle folks, the folks who, if you go and you spend time with them face to face, that are, are kind and want to pay their rent and want to follow the rules and genuinely need affordable housing. Those are the folks that are worth fighting for and worth providing 
affordable housing too. And we're doing what we do every day because it is so hard when you get up to scale. And even when you only have one mobile home park, we all need to fight together. We all need to fight together to keep predatory slumlords out and to fight to preserve affordable housing. And even better, we need to fight to enhance it. Ladies and gentlemen listening in that aren't mad at me right now for saying all of this, please, please join me in the fight to preserve and enhance affordable housing. Thank you for tuning in.